Hello everyone. Today we will be reading a story of a young boy who pushes through obstacles to show the world his true self. I chose this book because I believe it is a story that works to break stereotypes in a way everyone can understand. And on that note, let's begin with the reading. Today we will be reading Morris Micklewhite and the Tangerine Dress, written by Christine Balachino, illustrated by Isabel Malenfant. Morris Micklewhite has a mother named Moira and a cat named Moo. Morris likes Sundays because his mother makes him pancakes on Sundays. Mondays are great too, because on Mondays, Morris goes to school. Morris likes a lot of things about school. He likes to paint, he likes to do puzzles, he likes the apple juice at snack time, and singing the loudest during circle time. Most of all, Morris likes the dress-up center and the tangerine dress. Morris likes the color of the dress. It reminds him of tigers, the sun, and his mother's hair. He likes the noises the dress makes, swish, swish, swish when he walks, and crinkle, crinkle, crinkle when he sits down. He takes turns wearing all the different shoes, but his most favorite ones go click, click, click across the floor. Sometimes the boys make fun of Morris. Sometimes the girls do too. Morris pretends he can't hear their words over these swish, swish, swishes, crinkle, crinkle, crinkles, and click, click, clicks he makes when he walks. Morris pretends he can't hear their words, but he can. On Monday, Becky tried to pull the dress right off his back. You can't wear it. You're a boy. On Tuesday, Eli, Henry, and the other boys wouldn't let Morris ride on their spaceship unless he took the dress off. Astronauts don't wear dresses. On Wednesday, B and Lila noticed Morris's fingernails. His mother had painted them for him the night before. They chased him around the playground, shouting, Pinky fingers! Pinky fingers! On Thursday, the boys wouldn't sit near Morris at the snack table. We don't want you to turn us into girls. On Friday, Morris pretended he had a tummy ache. When he thought of all the kids in his class and all the mean things they did and said, his tummy ached for real. His mother let him stay in his bed and read books about elephants. Moo sat in his lap. Moo liked elephants too. On Saturday, Morris's mother brought him some apple juice. As he took a sip, she stroked his hair. Moo purred loudly. Morris suddenly felt well enough to do a puzzle. He hummed to himself and felt better still. On Sunday, Morris crawled out from under the covers after a wonderful dream about being on a space safari with Moo. In the dream, they saw big blue elephants and the tigers, the color of the sun, that Morris could hold in the palm of his hand. The elephants swish, swish, swished as they moved through the grass, and the tigers ate giant leaves that crinkle, crinkle, crinkled. As their tiny teeth chewed them, the buttons on the spaceship click, click, clicked under Morris's fingers. Morris wanted to share all the amazing things he had seen. He took out his brushes, put on his smock, and began to paint, using every color he could imagine. He showed his painting to his mother when he was done. He pointed out the big blue elephant, the tiny tiger the color of the sun, the tall grass and the giant leaves, He pointed out Moo in a shiny round space helmet. And who's that, his mother asked, pointing at the little boy in the tangerine dress, riding atop the big blue elephant. Morris was hoping she'd ask. That's me, he said. On Monday, Morris went to school with his painting rolled up in his backpack. When he had the chance, he put on the dress that reminded him of tigers and the sun and his mother's hair. Morris swished, swished, swished. The tangerine dress crinkled, crinkled, crinkled. His shoes clicked, clicked, clicked. Morris felt wonderful. Eli and Henry wouldn't let him on their spaceship, so Morris built his own. He hung his painting on the front of it and climbed in, ready to take off. Are there really elephants in space? Eli asked. And tigers? 
If you follow me, we can find out, Morris offered. Eli and Henry followed Morris to a planet they had never visited before. As they explored, Morris swish, swish, swished. The tangerine dress crinkled, crinkled, crinkled. His shoes click, click, clicked. By the time they returned to Earth, Eli and Henry had decided that it didn't matter if astronauts wore dresses or not. The best astronauts were the ones who knew where all the good adventures were hiding. Morris smiled. He already knew that. When snack time was over, Becky demanded the dress. Morris told her she could have it back when he was done with it. Boys don't wear dresses, Becky snipped. Morris smiled as he swished, crinkled, and clicked back to his spaceship. This boy does. Thank you all for listening.